morning? Morning. But looks like we finally are getting some spring weather. I'm sure that makes everybody. You notice that our crew was out there yesterday. Our, our, our tree in the front there is, well, it's no longer with us. <laughs> it, it, all, these, all these winter storms finally got to it. So, um, but, you know, we're, we're glad that um, we got a group of guys that came up here yesterday and more firewood from Pastor Chris's outdoor fire pit. So he's excited about that. Um, but no. It's great to be gathered back here week two and back in the sanctuary, and we're excited as we, uh, we're going to start our series uh, over Lent on the book of Ruth, and uh, we have eight Bible study groups that are gathering around that throughout the week as well, so we're excited about that opportunity uh, to uh, engage uh, this book, and we're excited about the ongoing renovations being done here, uh, and the speakers uh, are being installed. And uh, we're also looking at what to do uh, with the renovation of Darthic. So there's a lot going on here and, and eventually uh, new floors for the, for the uh, staff offices. So lots of exciting things happening here at Bethel uh, and we're glad you are here. Uh, let's go ahead and rise for our opening hymn, O Lord, throughout these 40 days. Uh, we are doing, uh, like we did during Advent, we are uh, new setting three. Um, and if you are following with the Lutheran Service book, I'd be setting three. Do 
died for us, and for his sake forgives all of our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives us the power to become the children of God, and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Our, our psalm this morning is Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will lie in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress. My God, you trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. He will cover you with his pinions. And under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and cover. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the terror of the clouds by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that awaits in the day. The epistle reading for the first Sunday in Lent is from Romans chapter 10, verses 8 to 13. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading is from Luke chapter 4, verses 1 to 13. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And said to him, to you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem 
and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you. And on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. Service continues with the sermon.
family chapel for our ELC. And we had over 30 parents of our ELC and a couple of former parents. We found out about on Facebook. We were all gathered in here with the kids. And um, we did a kind of first half of that was designed for the kids. And then we had all time for the parents. And it was really well received. And we're going to start doing that at least once a month. Um, and part of that, and part of what we do with the kids um, in here, and then sometimes for, for chapel every week with the kids at the ELC, and also sometimes with our children's church on, uh, on the second service, we show these videos called Holy Moly. Uh, and they're, they're designed kind of to engage the kids into the, the Bible story. Now, they're not always 100% accurate. You're going to, if you know the story of Ruth, you're going you're gonna to see a little bit of a licenses that they take that the story not we'll, we'll, we'll fix those in the sermon in the big in the beginning but kids whether you're here or you get watching at home watch this video this is about a lady named ruth who went through some really tough times and today specifically we want to look at her her mother-in-law lady named naomi and and see how well what i want to look for is this idea of commitment. How do Ruth and Naomi show a commitment to each other?
All right, kids and those that are young at heart, the part of that I want you to focus on in that video is that embrace between Naomi and Ruth, and that's going to be a big part of the, the big kid message. And you're thinking, but who do you hold on to tight? Like, who do you commit to? Who, who is the most, are some of the most important in your lives? Like, maybe your brothers and sisters, or your parents, or whatever. And we remember that, that just as we hold on tight to them, Jesus holds on tight to us and keeps us in his hands. And Jesus' commitment to us is always there. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be from God as we meditate on this word today. May this meditation be pleasing in his sight. Amen. Commitment. Think about that word for a second. Chew on it. Think about it. Listen, we talked about the kids a little bit there, but what does it mean to have a commitment? What images, what thoughts come to mind? Maybe what people come to mind when you think of the word commitment. And while you do that, think of a time that you were completely committed to something. Or, or maybe you continue to be in the form of a, it could be a person, it could be an idea, it could be a church, it could be a, a job, it could be lots of things. Commitment's not easy, is it? <laughs> to be committed to the same person, the same community, the same whatever over months, years, decades. It takes dedication. It takes sacrifice. It takes um, patience at times. All these things. It, commitment is not easy. Because as we're going to see today, even the, even the idea of the, the title of this message, a selfless commitment, in order to really be committed to something, requires a certain amount of selflessness. You can't be totally committed to something else and make it all about you. Those two don't work. If you make it all about you, that commitment will eventually fall apart. All right, how about then, how about a time you found commitment a little more challenging? You thought you were committed to the situation, to this friendship, to a sports team <laughs> that keeps losing or whatever. You're like, yeah, this is not so easy. Maybe something like this. Please be aware that I am totally committed to remaining fully uncommitted to commitment. Kind of reminder that commitment's not always easy. It's easy to, to it's not we, we can boldly say, I'm committed to this. I'm all in on this. What about when it gets hard? What about when the chips go down? What about when maybe because of circumstances beyond your control, you're not able to make a commitment? Car breaks down, whatever. I mean, things happen. I remember one of the challenging things about being a parent. Now my daughter's almost twenty-two, so it's not quite the same. But when they're when they're young, what you got to be very careful as a parent or a grandparent saying, "We might do this," because what are they here? You're you're gonna do it, and then later, say, well, Dad, we didn't do this. And I, I, I never said we were. Well, no, you said that. Uh, so you you, you gotta learn that even what how we communicate something may indicate that we're committed to something or that we're going to do this when well, maybe the intent's not. I, I get myself in trouble even here with the staff sometimes where I, I've been told I tend to say things very boldly and very matter-of-factly. And people sometimes interpret that as Chris is saying we're going to do this. Well, really, I just don't think, I, I'm an idea person. If you're on council, you know, I think about a lot of ideas. Most of them are bad. But every once in a while, I get a good one. Um, but, yeah, so well, sometimes it's hard to commit even if you don't know what, what exactly it is you're committing to, right? 
people that are, well, let's do this, let's do that. And then, so commitment is challenging. There's a lot of factors that go into holding on to a commitment. In our, our stories, we kind of we kicked it off a little bit Wednesday with Dash Wednesday, but really on this Sunday and through the, the Bible studies throughout this week, as we really kick off this, this story of Ruth, and, and really the beginning of the story, the, for this first um, few verses here is really more about Naomi than it is Ruth. She's kind of the main character of the story. This idea of commitment is put to the test. This idea of commitment is at the forefront of what we see Naomi dealing with because Naomi is in what we would say is a desperate situation. She's in a difficult situation. And it's during those times that we're in our own desperate situations as a, as a society or, or as a person or as a family or whatever where you really have to sometimes rethink your commitments. I have these commitments. I can't meet them all, so which ones can I? And those are difficult challenges. Those are difficult situations. What does it mean to be committed to something even in the most difficult of situations? So our reading this morning is from Ruth chapter 1. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. A man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He and his wife had two sons. The name of the man was Amilech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the name of his two sons were Malan and Chilion. They were Ephraim. Ephraimites from Bethlehem and Judah. They went to the country of Moab and remained there. But Melech and the husband of Naomi died. See, he died separate from the sons. So the video wasn't completely accurate. Just hang with me there. And she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives, and the name of one was Orpah, and the other was Ruth. They lived there about ten years. And both Malan and Chilion died, so that the woman was, was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she was with her two daughters-in-law. And they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go return each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. She, then she kissed them, and they lifted their voices and wept. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I say I have hope, even if I should have a husband this very night and should bear sons, would you therefore refrain from marrying? No. My daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter to me for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. It's kind of that part we're talking about with kids, that, that embrace, that who are you clinging to no matter what. That's kind of a a sign of a commitment, right? Is when you hold on to someone. Um, you know, when I, the couple of times I've been around someone at, at the very end of their life and they're being held on to by their loved one, something like that. And that, that's, that's a very, very powerful moment. So again, we see Naomi is in this desperate situation. And I talked about this a little bit on Wednesday, but I'll, I'll bring. Because we went the first five verses is what the the, purpose, the, uh, the the context of the sermon on Wednesday was about. But just just to bring you up to speed a little bit is this is going on during the time of the judges. The time of the judges was a very difficult time, about three hundred years or so between 
the conquest of Joshua and the Israelites coming in the promised land and then the, the time of the kings starting with Saul and during that time there was just, just a lot of rebellion against God because the people wanted a king and then a judge would come up and restore the people and then they kind of had was going over again and we kind of see this being played out in the story right there's a famine famine could have had something to do with the wars and then Naomi finds out later kind of to the grapevine that God has restored the land so that the famine is over and it the, the, her, the land that her family still has a connection to um, is, is, is growing crops again and, and, and that's kind of where she's at. So she loses her husband and sons while in a foreign land. They were in this foreign land. Um, first the husband dies and then about 10 years later it seems that the, that the sons die and they're in the foreign land because of the famine. They go to a new place but kind of away from their greater network of support, whatever that might have looked like, cousins, grandparents, aunts, uncles, things like that. How many of you are know someone that has done that, left the, the comfort of your support network for a, a new opportunity across the country, away from family? Now, nowadays, we have things like Zoom and phone call and an airplane, and it's relatively easy to get back. To loved ones, but that's a, a recent reality. You even look at, think about people that first came to this country from Europe or wherever, got on a boat with no hope of ever seeing their loved ones again. Maybe, maybe a message through a telegraph or something, you know, maybe a, a letter. But that's about it. So they, they go to this new country. It's not that long of a journey, but it's still a new country and a new new customs, a new culture, and during this time, first her husband, then both of her adult sons, who have, who have taken on local wives, mobile wives, die. Now, in any situation, in any cultural situation, for a person to, to lose, for a, for a woman especially, to lose her son and two sons and her, her only children and her husband would be a difficult thing but you know up until more recently as well um just kind of like the travel reality but certainly in biblical times a a widow um, had very few opportunities uh to be taken care of now we'll find out a little bit more as the story goes uh, but he basically had to have a next of kin, whether it be, and it kind of went in order. It was kind of spelled out pretty, pretty specifically what, what the, that order was. You know, it was first your, if you had adult children, then if your husband still had brothers, um, and then it kind of expanded beyond that. But so basically there was no one in this land of Moab to take care of her. And additionally, she had no means, even though we see through the, all these hints in the text that they're, they're kissing each other, they're embracing, and, and she's saying, it's bitter for me. She has no way to take care of these daughters. So she feels responsible for both Ruth and for Orpah. She's made a commitment, right? When you know, A lot of times... Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know how this works out in the dynamics of your families. I, I know a few situations, but you know, a lot of times, you know, in-laws become, in, in a healthy envir environment, become just as much a part of the family as your own kids. Sometimes you can get along with the in-laws better. <laughs> um, so, she, you, there's definitely this bond between these three women, and Naomi is left with this Dilemma where the only way she can really be taken care of is to return home. But then she also believes that the other girls are in the same situation. They probably, hopefully, have a, a father to go back to or a brother to go back to. There's someone in their family that can take care of them, but they're not going to have any responsibility towards Naomi. 
You know, so she in this feels that, that the best thing and, and the only way she can keep her commitment to them is for them to part ways. And it's bitter, and it's sad, it's horrible. This is this is gut wrenching. I mean, and she and she tells the story like, you know, what what can I do? Have new get remarried and have new sons? Are you gonna wait, you know, 18 years for them to be ready to marry you? Of course not. I mean, she 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 kind of gives this hyperbole, speaking this this kind of this crazy story. It's not you know meant to be anything that can realistically happen, but she's so desperate, she's just saying, this is what what we're left with. The only way I can show a commitment to you is to have you return to your people. And she, and even in this, not only does she lose her husbands and her sons, not only does she feel responsible for her daughters-in-law, she also feels, even as God's hand is gone against her, she says, she says this word exactly, she says, um, it is exceedingly bitter for me for your sake. So th this is difficult for me. It's bitter. But the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. And then when she kisses them, she, she says, maybe the Lord, or may, the Lord will deal kindly with you as you have dealt kindly with me. So you've been kind to me. I trust that the Lord is going to deal kindly with you if you return to your home. You've Fulfill your commitment to me is basically what she's saying here. You are no longer obligated to me. You need to go take care, fend for yourself in a sense, or, or go to the, the place where you can get support. So she feels that God will um, bless them and, and, and help them to, to find new husbands and, and help them to find rest and will do kindly with them. He says, the Lord has dealt bitterly with me, and I have nothing to offer you. She feels as though God's hand has gone against her. I don't know if you've ever felt that way. Have you ever felt like the hand of God has turned against you? We see that all, David says that a lot in the Psalms, and it is part of our tradition as Christians is to, the, the idea of lament. The whole book of Lamentations is that way, but a lot of the Psalms of lament have this, this, this idea of it's as though God's hand has turned against me. You know, I'm, probably some people in parts of the Ukraine are feeling that way. Um, but yeah, we all struggle at times. And I don't know, or we all experience difficult times. We all experience desperate times. And, and for some of us that, and I felt this way times in my life, where God has literally turned his back against you, turned his hand, has gone against her. But it's interesting in this, she, she says that, it's as though God's hand had turned against me, but she doesn't lose faith. So sometimes we, we think this idea of doubt is, or this, this lament is, well, then she's abandoned her faith. But no, she's saying the Lord may still deal with you, that there's the Lord has dealt positively with Israel, and that I can return to my. So she hasn't lost her faith in all of this. She just feels as though God's goodness is kind of escaping her right now, and she's and she's struggling with this. Yet, in all this hardship, she shows what I would call as a selfless commitment. She realizes, she believes sincerely that, like I said, that the, these daughter-in-laws have fulfilled their commitment to her. And she feels that the best she can do for them is to return them to their families to be taken care of. She realizes that she no longer has a means by which to take care of them. And in this, we see two different responses. And next week, we, we get more specific into to the words of Ruth and, 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 and how she shows this commitment back. But right now, we're focusing still on Naomi. But we, we do see two different responses to this. 
And, and, and I think it's important. Sometimes you might read this text and say, well, you know, Ruth was the committed one and Norpa was not, or that one responded better than the other. And I don't think that's the point of this text. I think the point of this text is that during hard times, have you ever been in a situation where you have no good options? You have bad options and you're trying to discern which is the less, the least bad option? <laughs> I think we've all been there one time or another. Like, well, I, you know, I don't really have any good options, but I got all these bad options. So which is the worst or the least bad option? I think that's kind of what's going on here. There's no good options in this situation. There's a series of bad options, and which is the least bad. And these two women interpret that differently. Orpah says, you know, she's right. I'm going to return to my family and to my level where I believe my support is. But from the, the, the text, you can see that this is a difficult decision for her. They're embracing, they're crying, they're, they're, and they're walking with her along the way, and, and, and she's Torn. I mean, this is a gut-wrenching kind of stuff. And then it says, Ruth, but Ruth clung to her. So, Naomi's commitment, Naomi's selfless commitment was so strong that Ruth would abandon her own family, whatever family she had to go back to, and wherever, as we'll see next week, wherever you go, that's where I'm going. You see, our, our sense of commitment is strongest when it's put to the test. And in this text, we see this, this bond between a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law of Ruth and Naomi is put to the ultimate test. The, the son slash husband who's the, the connector of the two is no longer in the picture. They're both widows now, both needing someone to take care of them. And that someone to take care of them is in two different places. For Naomi, it's back in Jerusalem or back in Bethlehem. For Ruth, it's somewhere in Moab. And the only way that they can stay together is for one to abandon their home and go with the other. And Ruth and Naomi stay together because of this selfless commitment of Naomi has been so strong that Ruth cannot abandon her. So how do we learn then from Naomi's selfless commitment here? How do we Learn from how to stay committed even in the most difficult situations. I, I still think that what Naomi, it's her faith in God, even though she says that God has dealt bitterly with her, she feels that way, she's still trusting in God. She's trusting that God has something for her back in her homeland. She's trusting that God has something for her her daughter-in-laws, where they are. She's trusting in the Lord to work this out. And this is out without a knowledge of the cross, right? Jesus has not come yet. So what, what did people in, 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 in Naomi's day have to hold on to? Well, it was the trust that from the very beginning, God had said, I'm going to make all of this right. I'm going to redeem all of this. And as we're going to see, as we go through this book of Ruth over the next six weeks, that Ruth is a redemption story. It's a story of God taking what is broken, taking what is seems desperate and restoring it. Specifically in the lives of Naomi and Ruth, but because of Ruth's connection to Jesus on a, on a global way as well. But what I think the main thing we can learn from Naomi's selfless commitment here is that our sense of commitment is tested when it's hard. 
And I think we all have to wrestle with what, what is it that we're committed to no matter what? What relationships? What ideas? What faith? Because Naomi could have easily abandoned God in all of this. She could have easily abandoned the girls or, or felt no, no longer felt responsible for them. But she doesn't. She, she works with them to try to find the best solution. And it literally kills her. Ruth could have gone home, which would have probably been the easier thing for her to do. Because now she's committing to this foreign land where she knows no one other than Naomi. So, what are we committed to most? Hopefully, <laughs> as followers of Jesus at the cross, right? Hopefully that's the thing that we're most committed to. But beyond that, what are we committed to? You know, I think it's beautiful that Bethel has shown this commitment to this space to rebuild the sanctuary. I think it's, 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 it's great that we've shown this commitment to be in East Dallas, the far East Dallas, to be in this community for the last 60 plus years. And now we're, we're wrestling with what is next for us. And what kind of commitment will that take? And we don't know yet. We're still wrestling with that. But I can tell you, any commitment worth having is going to be a selfless commitment and it's going to take sacrifice from all of us. Amen? Amen. As you just stand as we continue our worship with the words of the creed. And I think this, you know, the, the idea of a selfless commitment well, the beauty of this Apostles' Creed, which is, you know, such an early creed, probably second century, you know, within 100 or 200 years after Jesus rose and, you know, left us with the promise to return, this summarizes what we're committed to as believers in Jesus. These words. I mean, the Bible is a huge book. They summarize it with these few statements and said, but this is what we are selflessly committed to as, as believers these words. So, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
or any personal information and obviously to leave a gift in that way as well. And we are blessed to have a, a special offering, offertory solo, uh, so you may be seated. Uh, for those that are 
Recovery and those that are preparing for the end of life. We pray for Ruth. We pray for Terry. We pray for Marilyn. We pray for Katie. We pray for Julie. We pray for Bill. We pray for Jeannie. We pray for David. We pray for Mel. We pray for Sharon. We pray for Cindy. We pray for Michelle. Jack, Kenneth, Mark, Mary, John, Risa, Ruth, Sean, Kevin, and Ruth. We pray for the friends of my, my, my friends uh, or the family of Reba Davis, her, her son Sandy, and extended family, and pray. Uh, I just want to think that she was a great uh, encourager of me in my life, Lord, and she was a great friend of me, so uh, we pray, I pray for her life, and uh, pray as, as they make their arrangements as well. Uh, Lord, pray for the life, that the work of the spiritual leadership team, uh, especially as they, they seek to, to, to figure out ways to, to bring new life, and uh, new energy to this place, Lord. Uh, we thank you for the work that was done here and continue to be done in, in uh, bringing up our, our house uh, to your house here, um, uh, the renovations and, and, and whatnot. Lord, we thank you for all of that. Um, we also thank you for the, the families that gathered here this week for our, uh, for our praise time, for our family chapel, and that, that we can continue to, to build that relationship between the Early Learning Center and our, the church. And we also, Lord, as we start these, these Bible study groups that are beginning this morning uh, on the book of Ruth, we pray that they will be an encouragement to those who go through them and that we will learn uh, today about, this week, about the selfless commitment of, of, these, of these women and, and, and how the, the, they stand out as, as examples of what it means to, to have faith and even in difficult circumstances. We pray all these things, Lord, uh, in, your, in your son's name, who has boldly taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.
you turn to the, the last page of the announcements, um, we're going to kind of re kind of restore the, the practice of the first weekend of the month, being when we gather, or kind of the first week of the month, be when we gather items for White Rock Center of Hope. Uh, Mark Weber's our kind of our liaison to the center. Um, we have a, a tub back there where we're working to get a more permanent, you know, piece out there, the, 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 a drop-off area. But the, the, the things that are most needed were in the vessel of glance, but they're also listed on the tub itself. So during this next week, if you have if you want to drop some of the things off, we're also looking to have another volunteer day, day there soon, a couple of opportunities for people to volunteer at White Rock Center of Hope. Now, in the story of the judges... The, the, the Israel was upset. They wanted to be like everyone else and have a king. They were jealous. Well, I was at another, at another church this week that had a pastor's meeting, and I was jealous of their pew Bibles. <laughs> Look at our pew Bibles. They don't match the wrong translation. But magically, there's a solution. Concordia Publishing House makes a English service version pew bible for ten dollars you know so oftentimes we ask for things the church is like hundreds and thousands of dollars for ten dollars you can sponsor a pew bible and we need five cases the information is in there but if i would love to have when we dedicate this church this building on palm sunday i would love to have new pew bibles that you can read along see i, I even preach from the bible the ESV bible. so that's a way that you can make a small donation to Bethel and, and, and have matching pew Bibles. And that would make your pastor very happy. <laughs> uh, please join us for the upcoming Linton worship services that schedule's on there. Uh, pastor Chris is making his, eh, not so famous, but chilly uh, this week. And if you want to sign up for a meal for the after the new service, that would be great as well. And also, not too late to sign up for one of the Ruth Bible studies. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.